Today, we're going to be breaking in this awesome Wilson A2K first baseman. This is my teammate's brand new Jose Abreu first baseman. It's a Wilson A2K with spin control and snakeskin. It's a super dope glove, really good construction, awesome quality. This is a really good mitt. Before we get started, I wanna ask you guys to please like this video. Let's see if we can get to 80 likes. Subscribe to the channel, comment down below what you guys wanna see in future videos. All right, let's go. All right, to start off, you're only gonna need a few things. Uh, a glove oil of your choice. It doesn't really matter which kind. I just have this one lying around, so I'm gonna use this one. This is Rawlings Glove Gel. You're gonna need a mallet and also a small weight, maybe two or three pounds is good. If you don't have a mallet, a weight will suffice. Last but not least, depending on how big you want the pocket to be, you're gonna need a baseball or a softball. Something I noticed off the get-go is that this glove isn't as stiff as other gloves you find on the market. For example, my JL Glove Co. First Basement is way stiffer. He's thick! When I first got this glove, I wasn't even able to do this to it. I can close it this much, only because I've been you know, squeezing at it every now and then, but I still have to break this one in. That's gonna be another video. But yeah, this Wilson A2K, um, it's a Jose Abreu uh, 79. Uh, wow, I can't even read that. Jose Abreu 79 GM. It's a 12 and a half inch first basement, which is actually on the smaller side. I'm pretty sure Joey Votto uses a 12 and a half, but anyway. This one isn't as stiff, so I actually think it's doable for one day. So the first thing you wanna do is apply your glove oil preferably to the break points, the pocket, and on the web. Um, I would also just cover the laces a little bit. Since this glove is made out of snakeskin on the outer shell, um, the oil isn't really necessary. But if you do have enough oil, I would just put it on the whole glove. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is establish the break point. This glove is a single break first basement. And what that means is that there's essentially one hinge on the glove. You'll see that on other first basements, there's more space here between the thumb and the heel. Um, and then on other gloves, there'll be like another row of lace here. Uh, but this one is a single break. The hinge is just right there. So we're gonna take our small weight and we're gonna pound the break point right there on that hinge. So it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna put the baseball in it, in the pocket, just so when the glove closes, it doesn't completely pancake. What I'm also gonna to wanna to do is, as I'm breaking the heel, I do this to it. I move it over and I slide it around so that I break in the heel evenly. You're also going to want to do this to every glove. This applies to every glove that you break in. You want to break in the heel also by doing this to it. You can even do it with the ground. I put down a yoga mat to protect the glove and not scratch it up with the floor, but you can do this like this as well. After you've broken in the heel, you want to break in the pocket and that's pretty simple. You just take your mallet and you hit the crap out of the glove. The pocket on a first basement should lie just beneath the bottom of the web. Usually what a lot of brands will do is that they'll actually make like a laced pocket there. You see those laces there at the bottom of the web? That's where you want your pocket to be. So you take your mallet and you just pound that area right there. You don't want to make it here. Your pocket isn't going to be there. You don't want your pocket to be on the web either because that's going to make a funnel effect for your glove. So you want the pocket to be right there. This Smith already has a pretty loose web compared to my JL Glove Co. First Basement. It's a pretty tight web. So normally on a glove with a really tight web, I would do like this to it, to the top of it, do some of these, but this one is already pretty soft and loose. So my main focus on this mitt is the heel and the pocket and the shape. A first basement should be shaped inwards like this. Don't be scared to bend that pad right there because this is one big old pad that runs through the top of this glove right here. So you wanna bend that in forward to get that shovel shape, for example, like so, like this one has. 
This is why I like first basements that have this separated part right here because it makes it easier to bend that in like that. So when shopping for a first basement, I definitely recommend the uh, two-piece shell. I did mention earlier that this is a 12.5 inch first basement, but to be fair, this one actually plays pretty big compared to other brands. This is a 12.75 first basement, and it actually plays pretty true to size in my opinion. I think pre I'm pretty sure that Rawlings also plays a little smaller or true to size, but Wilson first basements, it looks like they actually play a little bit bigger. So keep that in mind when shopping for a first basement from Wilson. One hour later. All right, guys, so after breaking this in for about an hour, this is what I got it to. Even though I use a mallet and a weight and glove oil and all those things, I want you guys to know that plain catch is the best way to break in a glove. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be posting a couple more videos this month before baseball season starts, so stay tuned for that. Comment below what you guys want to see in the next videos, guys. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.